Welcome to Motorsport Coaching, the podcast for racers with racers. Miss Motivate can help get you to the next level. Every episode, she talks to the best racers of today and those that can get you there. She'll help you get better. Racing new. At fitness, nutrition, sports psychology, sponsorship, social media, public relations, and media training. Connect with Miss Motivate at motivatetraining.com.au. That's M O T I V, the number eight, training.com.au. And now, to help get you to the next level, Miss Motivate herself, Belinda Risley. Hello, and welcome to episode 15 of the Motorsport Coaching Podcast. I am your host, Belinda Risley. Today, I'm really excited to be joined by Miss Charlotte Woods. Charlotte is the brand and communications manager of the sponsorship consultant. Charlotte is often the first point of contact for clients who want to learn about developing their brand and profile, connecting with sponsorship opportunities, creating and managing the sponsorship consultants online community with athletes, sports professionals, and sponsors from all around the world who seek information. Charlotte offers support, guidance, and creative ideas, as well as creating and managing content and digital engagement. She has a passion for helping athletes identify and connect with opportunities that are right for them. I'm really excited to get into this subject today of branding. Um, I feel like some of these athletes, I get a little bit lost around the importance of actually branding and what it can actually do around gaining sponsorship. So without any further ado, please welcome my special guest today, Charlotte Woods. Welcome to the show, Charlotte. Hi, thank you for having me. I'm very excited about the topic we're going to be talking about today, which is athletes' brand. Can you tell us a little bit more about it? Like, what is what is it, and why is it important? Mm-hmm. Your athlete brand is what some people might call um, a personal brand, but we like to call it athlete brand. It's basically just who you are. You already have a brand. Everyone has a brand. It's not some complex process. You don't have to go out and brand yourself like you're a a car or a celebrity um it's basically who you are um there's certain elements it's what you care about um parts of your personality your visual style all of that it's it's basically just how you communicate helps you align with the right opportunities for you it helps you make decisions especially we're in a brand new world of social media where everything we're doing is being watched all the time you might have things set to private but you're still being watched. Yes, it's very true. <laughs> yeah. So it's really important that you know what your brand is so that you can be in control of it rather than look back in 20 years and think, oh, that was my brand and I'm not sure I'm happy with it. And so, Charlotte, you mentioned that everybody has a brand um, through their different traits. How can people identify that or um, come to the realisation of, of what the actual brand is? Mm-hmm. Basically, it's, it's not hard. Um, it's everything that's already about you. So spend half an hour a day uh, thinking about certain parts of you. So I would be looking at the clothes you wear. I would be looking at the words that you use a lot. I would be looking at what you care about. So if you care about the environment or human rights, that's part of your brand. What your message is as an athlete and as a person, all those sorts of things are what make up your brand and they're what you should be looking at. And then from there, you would be looking at how you would communicate that um, through social media and um, media opportunities and that sort of thing. So you, uh, you mentioned about their message. How can people pinpoint exactly what their message is? Mm-hmm. A great way of looking at what your message is, is would be to look at what you care about. So if you care about the environment um, or if you're passionate about the environment, so what you care about and what you're passionate about, I would be looking at them first. What do you care about? What are the messages within those that you want to um, express or talk about? So if it's the environment, your message would be, I want everyone in the world to be more environmentally sustainable. That would be your message. It's as simple as that. You might have two or three messages. You might have only one. Um, It's up to you. Mm-hmm. Um, we're going to go back a little bit to the start to how did you become an athlete brand specialist so tell us a little bit about your journey to this day. Uh, I started at the sponsorship consultants as an intern last year as a little uni student and you've been on a massive journey over the last <laughs> 15 months or so yeah it's been quick 
Um, I started as an intern for as a communications and social media intern. And through that, I started working with all the individual athletes online that we work with. And we started noticing that a lot of the athletes wanted to get sponsored, but they were having trouble either moving forward or they were getting, they were getting stuck at some point along the way. And we realized it's because they don't know their brand. They're having trouble communicating who they are and what they want to sponsors. So we looked at developing programs and a book um, that would help athletes with that. And that's really how we became brand specialists and just talking to lots and lots and lots of athletes. Mm -hmm. And what kind of roles or things do you help athletes with today? So what does an athlete brand specialist do for, for athletes? Basically, we have, it's not launched yet, but it will be within probably the end of the year, programs, so online education programs. Um, we have a book and at some point we will do workshops probably. We do mentoring. We're, I'm just doing some mentoring um, in two days with someone on Athlete Brand. So we also help athletes individually identify their brand, communicate it and leverage it. And so what are some of the first steps um, that athletes can do to establish their brand? So we talked about spending 30 minutes a day working at like their clothes, their words, their core values. I guess one of the hardest things that I hear is like, I don't know what I value. Is there an easy way to identify values? Uh, you mentioned the environment, but is it is it something a little bit deeper to that or is it just simply like your likes and dislikes in, in the world? Yeah, I would also, mind mapping is a really good way to start with that. I know it's hard to think of what you value. I would have trouble maybe thinking off the spot if someone asked me what my values are, but maybe try mind mapping. So, and also you know, just writing down things like maybe it's justice or integrity or, you know, those sort of things are your values, honesty, that sort of thing. So you could also take athletes that you really admire, who you think um, are great people and think about them, you know, what, is, what do you think their values are and do any of those match with your own values? And can you tell us a little bit more about mind mapping? What exactly is mind mapping? I'm sure a few people will be sitting there going, I don't even know what mind mapping is. <laughs> yeah, it's just basically, it's just you get a big piece of paper, um, you write a word in the middle, so you say, what are my values? And then you just write down words, simple as that, write down words, maybe connect them, write other notes. It's just like a brain dump. Why are values important? Values are important because they really help you connect with the right opportunities. So they help you um, not only choose the right opportunities, but also have them come to you. Um, and also from a brand and sponsorship perspective, it's really important for authenticity. People are really going to believe in what you're saying and what you're doing a lot more if they can see that everything you do is connected to something bigger, like your values. And also in the long term, it's important um, if you're thinking about, you know, I want a career that spans 20, 30 years, you want to be consistently making good choices that align with your values rather than just sort of haphazardly choosing opportunities that maybe um, will catch up with you at some point and a sponsor won't choose you because they have certain values and you say your values match with theirs, but the choices you've made 10 years prior don't match. And like your social media posts and the yep. stuff you've been tagged into. Yeah. Like yep. Because right. everyone's watching you. Yes, that's right. So we've established that our first step is that we've identified um, to do our values and to do some mind mapping. What are some of the next steps that the athletes can do to, to really pinpoint um, mm -hmm. their, on, on establishing their brand correctly? Mm -hmm. Then I would be looking at how you would be communicating your brand places that so how you communicate it and where you communicate it so how would be through social media job interviews through your clothes all that sort of thing and then you would be looking at where so actually on social media on instagram a really good way um, because we are so social and online right now and one of the biggest and most sort of viewed places that you're going to communicate your brand is through social media. Um, I would be creating a social media planner and looking at the different elements of your brand, the different parts of your brand, and um, seeing where you can communicate those on social media in a natural way, but in a way that gives you confidence so that you know you are communi communicating all the parts of your brand. 
that you want to. And do you feel with your experience, one platform's better than the other for a promoting brand? So Facebook over Instagram, LinkedIn, Snapchat, YouTube, Twitter. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, I think they're all good. And I think really any platform that you like the most, as someone who's been doing social media for, you know, five years, um, I would say that any platform that you like the most, that you feel confident on, um, some people really like Facebook because they can write lots of posts and write long texts and they can post pictures. Some people like Instagram because they like the visual side of it. Um, some people like YouTube because they like videos. I know a lot of athletes like YouTube because they love creating vlogs and content that way. So any, com- any platform that you feel comfortable on is going to allow you to communicate your brand in the best way. And so that after we've got the communication down packed, we've um, put together a social media planner. What's, what, what else are we doing? Is the social media content that goes within that planner around the, those values and around those things like their clothes and our wording? And Yep. Yep, that's what I would be putting in. If you have a certain colour that you really like, if you feel that part of your brand is blue or red, Put blue and red in your social media planner. Say, I'm going to do a photo of me wearing blue and red because I think those colours are um, represent my personality. But then after that, after you've looked at communicating your brand, I'd really be looking at how you're going to leverage leverage your brand. So, um, how do you want your brand to benefit you specifically? What are the ways that you want to benefit from your brand? Is it more job opportunities? Is it um, more media? Is it um, maybe a bigger um, following, either online or just, you know, fans, um, more people to come and support you at events? You know, how do you want to benefit from it? And most people, I think, are going to be sitting there saying, all. (laughs) Yeah, and you might say all. Yeah. Yeah. And so what are those the best tips? Is it just about having a planner or is is there some tools of the trade that you can share with us? Mm -hmm. Um, Having a planner is definitely... I would say a really, really good tip and writing it down. Once you write it down, you're going to know it. You know, it's it's not sort of that complicated. I think people get afraid of brand and they think, oh, I've got to invent this brand that maybe doesn't actually represent who I am, but I want to be sellable. You know, I, I want to be a marketing tool. It's not about that. So write it down. Once you've written it down, and you, you could even have an action plan for each way. If you say, I want to leverage my brand in 10 different ray, ways, maybe have 10 different action plans of how you're going to do that. Uh, I know that we have some parents that listen to this podcast and I know that something they would probably be challenged with is about, um, I guess, coming up with a brand for a junior athlete. Is there any advice around that? I mean, obviously, they're still growing. A lot of our athletes could be, you know, as young as eight years old um, and they're probably still trying to identify their, their core values and their colours and um, their clothes that they're wearing. And uh, yeah. you and I both wore different clothes back when we were 8, 15, early 20s to, to today. Yeah. So how could they work on the brand? And obviously, a brand is forever um, mm-hmm. growing and changing and pivoting. Yes. Um, what's probably the best thing for a junior athlete at, at this point? My advice would be to, for the parents, would be to get your child as involved as possible in the process. Um, so really have them do it with you. Don't just do it for them and say, oh, I think they like red and blue and I think that um, they value honesty. You know, have them really make it a discussion and don't be afraid, you know, you can have a brand and it can change and evolve. Like you said, it doesn't have to be set in stone. The brand that they have when they're 10 doesn't have to be exactly the same as when they're 22. It can change, be free and open to that. Maybe reevaluate your brand every year um, or every six months. Um, and be aware that this is their brand and it's not your brand. That would be my big advice. And so um, after the leverage part and um, devising action plans, is there anything else that we need really to to get that brand established? Not really. Mostly just being consistently aware of how you are communicating it. So don't just, you know, develop this great and fantastic brand and then forget about it. Constantly, you know, it will be in your memory, but um, keep building your brand keep 
going back to the parts of your brand um, that you want to work on. And you probably won't be able to, when you look at the ways that you want to leverage your brand, um, you probably won't be able to do all of them at once. So don't just go, oh, I, the main, the number one is sponsorship and then just work on sponsorship for five years. Um, you can work on sponsorship first, but make sure you're going back and looking at all the other ways. And obviously you've been in this role for a while now. Um, I know one of my challenges that I come up against dealing with competitors is that they say and feel that my job is just to drive. Um, have you come across that working with the athletes that you do that they like, I just want to swim or I just want to run and jump. Like they don't see the value in doing all of this off track or behind the scenes process. Um, and what are some ways that you've helped them tackle that? Yeah, absolutely. I see it all of the time. It's one of our biggest challenges. It's sort of like a mental roadblock um, for them. And I completely understand it. You're an athlete that is like the most intense job ever. Like it really is a job, even if you're not earning any money from it, like you spend so much time just being an athlete. And so you think, well, that should just be the thing that I get to do. Like I shouldn't have to go and do all of this other stuff. Um, we see it all the time with sponsorship. They say, oh, well, I went to the Commonwealth Games or I went to the Olympics. Sponsorship opportunities should just be flying at me. And they're not. Um, and instead of then going and seeking them, they often just sit there and sort of sulk and say, well, why aren't they coming to me? Um, and that's not helpful at all. So I would get over that. Just realise that you do have to put the work in. It doesn't matter if you don't want to. You do have to put the work in. Um, it's a personal thing. Um, don't spend hours talking to your friends your other athlete friends about how unfair it is that you, your brand isn't just doesn't just magically appear and sponsorship isn't just you know flying at you. Find athletes who have maybe had unusual sponsorship or brand journeys, who um, have sought out those opportunities, who have really done it themselves, who haven't had it just come at them and fall in their lap. Um, follow them, look at what they've done, be inspired by them, find inspiration. I would really be thinking um, instead of saying, oh, this is so unfair that I have to go out and seek um, these opportunities and it's not just, you know, this, um, it's not all coming at me, um, it's not easy. I would be thinking this is a great opportunity. There's so much that could come from putting all this hard work in yeah that's what i'd be and like you said before it is only something that once it's done that it, you only need to review it annually and it, it is really just a matter of having a review and to see hey do i still believe in those values is red still my mm -hmm. favorite color has my yeah. opinion on the environment changed and then just adapting it so it's not like it's an ongoing you know full business plan redevelopment process yeah. year. it's just a matter of having a quick review to, to see hey am i still aligned with all of those um, things that I put into place last year. Yeah, exactly. Um, now, on the topic of brand, how important is having a logo for an athlete? Do you think it's important? I have actually never seen an athlete with a logo. I would be interested to see them. I've seen athletes with headshots that they use everywhere, but I've never seen an athlete with a with a logo. That's oh, interesting. Yeah. Yeah, well, so in motorsport, we would have a few because of, um, like, on their car, oh. like merchandise. Oh, of course. Yeah. Um, mm. So from a brand perspective, that's what I was thinking. Do you think it, it is important for an athlete or as you, I think you just kind of answered that saying that. Um, yeah, no, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, your brand is really just, like, everything that you're doing. It's it's all of these things. It isn't a logo. It's like a, it's like a, um, a company, a car company or a skincare company. Um, they might not have a logo. They probably will have a logo, but they might not have a logo. They still have a brand. You know, their brand is their logo. Yeah. Okay. And do you think it's important for athletes to have a website? Up to you, really. I think for some athletes it is. I think if you're social media, if you're scared of social media, it isn't something that you want to jump into. I would have a website because you must have some sort of online presence so if social media isn't your thing I would be looking at getting a website um, but really it's up to you it's not I think it's a great thing to have because you can put blogs on it you can put content on it you can update your journey on it you can put 
Um, you can have your athlete bio on there. I think it's a great thing to have. Do I think it's completely necessary? No. But it, if, you, if it's something that you want, I think it's a great thing to have. And do you think an athlete should have two separate Facebook pages, one being their personal and one being their athletic career? Yeah, we get that a lot. A lot of athletes are curious about that. Again, it's up to you. If you're, I would be looking at the sort of content that you want to post on your personal and your athlete page. You know, why? Write down the reasons why you would like to have a personal athlete page that is public, that is separate to um, the one that you share with just friends and fam- family. So if your friends and family are really getting sick of seeing your athlete posts all the time that are maybe a bit too promotional, then I would look at having a a public page. If you also just want to separate those two aspects of your life, I would do that. Um, If you want to post, maybe I would still advise against it, but riskier things um, that you would like to remain private put them on your private Facebook page for just your friends and family and save your um, athlete page for the things that you do want the rest of the world to see. That's how to promote your brand <laughs> and, and yes. your values and things like that. Yeah. Um, so you do have a new book coming out, um, Charlotte, uh, with the famous Vicky. Um, <laughs> can you tell us a little bit more uh, what's inside the book and what can the listeners um, find out about. Uh, so yes, we have a new book. It's called The Athlete Brand. Um, and it's basically everything that we've talked about today, but in a lot more detail. Um, so it's how to identify, communicate and leverage your brand. Um, it's sort of a short little how-to guide on how to um, build your brand. We wanted to use stories from real athletes but we decided against it um, and said we have some character profiles. So you'll see some um, cool little character profiles of athletes who um, will be basically showing you how they built their brand with some really cool drawings of those athletes. (laughs) I've seen some. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, Um, they're nice. Yeah, and yeah, it's basically just a how-to on how how to build your brand and it's short, it's really skinny. Um, because we wanted to keep it really simple for athletes. We didn't want it to be this big, arduous book of us just trying to show how many words we knew. Um, Yeah, so it's a really easy guide on how to build your brand, how to identify, leverage and communicate your brand. And when will that be coming out and how can people grab a copy? Mm -hmm. It will be coming out by the end of the year and it will be available online on our shop, on our online shop. Or it will also be available as printed books, which you can buy through our online shop too. And the online shop is at? Uh, www.thesponsorshipconsultants.com. <laughs> Last shop, I think. <laughs> and of course, there, what else can they find on the shop? What other services does this, the Sponsorship Consultant guys offer? Uh, we have lots of other things on the shop that you can take a look at. Um, we have our online programs. We have our fast track program, which is literally your fast track to getting sponsored. It only takes eight hours or two days. So you could realistically do it in a weekend. Um, we have our comprehensive or intensive sponsorship program, which takes up to three months, um, which is a more intense guide to sponsorship. Um, We also have our book on sponsorship for athletes as an e-book and as a printed book. We have options for um, mentoring, for social media, sponsorship, that sort of thing. Um, We have um, templates on how to create sponsorship proposals. Um, We have some resources for sponsors too. And we also have our blog and our podcast, um, which are our free resources for athletes about sponsorship. So many. Of course, all those links will be on the show notes for you guys to be able to access. Now, Charlotte, do you have an interest in motorsport? Um, I do. I, I mean, I don't drive, so I actually probably couldn't get in, in the car. But um, I can't even drive a manual. <laughs> but um, I always, when I was a kid, I loved, um, there was these ads on the TV for the track where I live. And I was always like, oh, I want to go there and do that. That looks like so much fun. And my friends used to go and just have like a blast. Um, But my parents wouldn't let me. Um, 
but yeah, it is, it is, I'm interested a little bit in all sports, but I've never really sort of taken um, an interest in any one sport in particular, but maybe motorsport is the one that if I sort of just went down to the track, <laughs> I would finally <laughs> get hooked. Do it. Well, we'll have to invite you out one time. Yeah. <laughs> Come and see all our logos. <laughs> <laughs> finally, I see the logo. And see all our branding that we're going to do. Obviously, you've been fast tracked yourself into your role working with athletes. So, mm -hmm. for, just for our final question, I just want to know why do you love working with athletes and why are you now so passionate about athlete branding and athlete sponsorship? What kind of hooked you in? Because, yeah, 15 months ago, you were yeah. social media and now you've, you know, taken on the world. You're speaking at the Commonwealth Games to, to athletes. Yeah. You've written a book. You've got the podcast. Um, yeah, your, your growth has been absolutely amazing over the last couple of months. And, yeah, it's been a bit insane. But really, I love online communities. I love how people can be connected online with strangers. I think it's bizarre and wonderful. And it doesn't really matter who, but I love people who are intense about things. I love people who are passionate about what they do. And I don't think anyone is more passionate about anything than athletes. Athletes are so passionate about what they do. It's really like the most important thing to them. And I had no idea really um, about what it takes to be an athlete. I had no idea that there were so many types of athletes until I started working with a sponsorship consultant. And I really love working with them and helping them because they have one, they're often not um, being supported in the way that they should be. They're often not they don't have a lot of power in terms of resources. So I love that we give them power in that they have their own resources um, that they can use for, for themselves rather than relying on other people all, all of the time. And I love that, you know, they really put their all into everything that they do. You know, they live crazy, hectic lives. They're athletes. They're maybe mothers or fathers um, they have a job, they have a life. And then on top of all of that, they have to identify their brand and they have to go out and get sponsorship. And even though it is hard and sometimes they do get a little bit sulky about it, they ultimately really put their all into it and really give everything back. And everything that I've given to them, I don't ever want to get anything back really. I don't want to be thanked and like worshipped for helping them for anything. But it's so nice because they are really appreciative, you know. They really do appreciate any help that you give them. Um, I sometimes think of myself as like a little mini um, sponsorship and brand coach that like they have their sport coach and I'm like their sponsorship and brand coach and I'm part of the team. <laughs> <laughs> so, really are you very much up. Yeah, so that's like really one of the biggest perks of working with the sponsorship consultants and working with athletes. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much again for your time today, Charlotte. I hope everyone got lots of out of that, especially about just starting, um, really. So um, I guess some of the, the biggest things that I got around was just to sit down um, and take half an hour, an hour or so, and think about what your values may be. Start off by doing a bit of a mind map. So just doing a circle, think about the words that um, you associate yourself to be. As Charlotte said, your clothing, your personality type, the way that you want to be perceived. I, I'm not going to go in there now, but I know we had a big talk about being the extrovert and the introvert and how that can come across. Yeah. <laughs> as well about being in one of the workshops about how being the introvert doesn't mean that you're rude. <laughs> <laughs> it just means you're an introvert. <laughs> but that how, how you actually um, promote yourself to be an introvert without coming across it being rude and yeah and um, that's part of the branding process really like looking to develop it into a social media plan around the values that you've established mm -hmm. brand concepts that you're wanting to come up with um, and then leveraging that through um, devising some action plans yes and all of the how-to is going to be in that brand new book coming out yes but yeah. Thank you very much again for your time today, Charlotte. Uh, again, all of those links on how to get in contact with Charlotte um, through the sponsorship consultants will be um, on our show notes. And um, I'm sure she'll be happy to answer any of your questions. They And they've also got a free Facebook group. Yes. Um, you guys can join. And what what is it again? What uh, the Athlete Sponsorship Hub. So it's basically just a free online Facebook group where we share tips and tricks on how to get sponsored. And you can also connect with other athletes um, and ask their advice and our advice on any sponsorship questions that you have. And there's over 3,000 members in there, thanks to Charlotte's hard work. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah. Share it around, join.
And there are a lot of international athletes on there as well. So those drivers that are looking to, to expand internationally over into the Europe and US and the UK, um, there's a lot of um, contacts on there that you can um, reach out to and, and network with. Yes. All right. Well, we'll probably catch up again, I reckon, um, in a few more months when you've got your next course, book, yep. workshop coming out that we'll be happy to promote. So thanks again, Charlotte, and we'll talk to you soon. Okay. Bye. Thank you so much for having me. Bye. Well, thanks everyone for listening to this week's show. I really hope you enjoyed that one as much as I did. Now, remember all the show notes with the links and the specials mentioned in today's show are available over at motivatetraining.com.au. If you haven't already, I'd really appreciate if you could head to iTunes or Stitcher, type in Motorsport Coaching, subscribe and leave us a review. Each week, I'll read them out and you'll go into monthly draw to win a fantastic prize. If you have any questions or comments, please email us at motivatetraining.com.au or head over to our Facebook page at motivate to tea. Until next time, take care. Get ready for the race. Do you feel one step closer to being the next superstar behind the wheel? Motivatetraining.com.au for more. M-O-T-I-V, the number eight, training.com.au. The green flag. Every episode gets you one step closer to the checkered flag. The Motorsport Coaching Podcast, getting you to the checkered flag faster.